This week we thought we would look at some of the teachings of Krishna, because Babaji often talks about Krishna's wisdom. Um, in one of the cases, the Pandavas had taken Krishna as their guru. But during the uh, Mahabharata epic, sometimes they sought his advice and sometimes they didn't. Is there a lesson to be learnt about when they did and didn't take the guru's advice? Yeah, definitely, in my opinion, often an ego of a person may dominate, command the nature of the mind. So that's inducing one to go aggressively and might be getting trapped into some trouble. So without taking the advice of the master, our one ego should be that Without my Guru's advice, I won't do anything. So we don't need uh, any other respect, self-respect, nothing matters. That we take our Guru's advice. Like for example, when they went for the dice game, which resulted in their vanavasam and trying to, the disrobing episode of Draupati, so many calamities, unpleasantness, and angers, taking oaths to kill, all these things happen. If only they had taken Sri Krishna's advice whether we should play or not. If at all play, what rules we should accept. Before going into the game, when we set a rule, everybody has a choice whether we want to accept such rules or not. But Pandavas, they went on simply accepting whatever rules Duryodhana, they set. You keep stake of your kingdom, your brothers, your wife, everything they went on doing like that one Yudhishthira. So instead, if he had told that he would like to consult his guru, there was nothing to lose. It was no insult. Taking advice from a guru is really their self-respect. That is our respect. When we try, okay, this is what my Guru taught me, that I would like to go like this. Today also we can tell, my Guru taught me and I would like to behave like this only. That is important for me, not what the society talks and not what the world says. So that is very important. See, because they didn't do that one, they got into such trouble, a big war happened finally. And almost everybody died in that war who participated in the Indian subcontinent. And Draupadi was almost about to be disrobed. So all these things happened. So these things could have avoided. And that's very important. That's what a beautiful lesson that we all can learn. But also, Babaji, um, we don't want to be bothering the Guru with all sorts of trivial questions about ordinary worldly things. So where do we decide what is appropriate to ask? You see, there are trivial things in the world, certain things. It is you who have to take a decision. A Guru might give a hint or talk of a justice and just learn to face whatever it is. Certain things a guru can definitely advise, no, this is wrong about justice. About if you ask, can I put my wife at stake? I want to play a dice game. Definitely we can tell a definite answer. Okay, this is not proper, improper. That's not, you have no such right to put at stake of another person, never mind even if she is your wife. You should be protecting her, her self-respect. You should be taking care of her. And you yourself must not put at stake. Only a little bit of money, so that is all enough. And after a limit, you should stop. Like that, one can advise easily. So that's what is important. But there are certain trivial things also might be there. Sometimes people want us to say advice. Should I go into this? Should I buy a home or not buy a home? Should I marry, not marry? So these are personal choices. Why you want to marry, you marry. And you want to buy a home, you buy a home. We will pray for you, we will bless you. To buy a home 
or to marry just take care that you don't do injustice and you don't rob somebody you don't go into such wrong things so then you work work hardly earn your money then you buy a home so there is no problem you can buy a car you can buy an aeroplane if you have a money so that is uh, what that becomes trivial there it's your choice you just so when you buy take care that you don't misbehave with that it's of all machinery houses everything never lose like we tell anybody comes they talk when we are retiring we will be acquiring such funds i am wondering where i should spend so we simply tell we take care of the principal amount keep in a fixed deposit like in the worldly advice also we can tell but <coughs> don't spend that one in you receive the interest from the interest you can help somebody you can live a beautiful life but don't lose the main money principal amount that's very important like this type of worldly wisdom advice can be given but often it is certain other thing you want to get married you get married it's up to you i want to take to sanya these are the way of life this has to be a personal choice not necessary that the guru will impose and tell you the guru can advise thank you babaji so um you mentioned um the disrobing of draupadi um i don't know whether i pronounced that correctly and you said at the time there were many very uh, respected leaders present and each of them in turn she asked to them to intervene to protect her but each of them even though they were very highly respected and spiritual people they each gave an excuse as to why they couldn't um i know you've spoken of this before but i think it's a wonderful lesson could you explain that situation to us please please uh it again this comes under one of the important thing that shri krishna taught <coughs> never define what your duties are means uh, what are its uh, shape and form it will have to be just like for example bhishma a great sire and he was a grand sire of the family he was highly respected and still in that age he was very powerful with his weapons he could have stopped anybody he could have annihilated anybody but he had surrendered to the king he i will take king's orders only without that i won't do anything that will be my duties he had taken a oath now draupadi was a daughter in law of the same royal clan so she was uh, into trouble by the wicked duryodhana who was also a prince of the clan only and now she comes to him to see the justice and protect where is it how could you dhrishtira lose me when he had lost himself and why didn't you stop him when he was putting at stake his kingdom and his brothers everyone this is not justified the bhishma said ke i am sorry daughter i cannot help you because i see my father's shadow in the king's throne i have surrendered without the king's orders i cannot do anything i have taken a oath that i will protect this kingdom at that time that man forgot if he had protected draupadi not allowed anybody to touch her or do anything wrong before shri krishna could intervene or any such thing could happen then he would have earned a lot of respect not only that he would have protected the entire clan from going into war unnecessary war which was born out of greed and misjudgments and all such things that happened so that's what he defined his dharma means duties my dharma is only to listen to the king's orders if the king becomes either wicked or na if not wicked powerless or um, totally attached to his own family he is becomes partial he cannot do any justice so if you surrender to such kings you will be putting yourself into danger and whatever decision that you might have to take whatever orders would be given to you 
you might be putting it in danger that's what during the war shri krishna told tells arjuna bhishma is fit to be killed now because he has taken a decision to go against dharma and he will be killing all people here innocent people also unnecessary if only as a one person if he had acted properly at that time and draupadi was being disrobed then this war could have been avoided nobody would have had to be killed at all everybody could have lived peacefully and happily so and now he has it sided again with the injustice so he is also to be killed otherwise a justice can never work a dharmatma king can never come into power that's what shri krishna dream if a ruler is both righteous you understand the word righteousness dharmatma dutiful for the larger cause for his subjects and also powerful then only subjects will have peace and happiness they will have that protection from the king like a father if he is either of the two only then others will take over he was powerful but he was he has misjudged his own dharma to be the king's orders one another person's orders cannot be your duties your duty sh- you should know what is your duty nobody should impose that you must be knowing that one so that's what shri krishna taught that's very important in our life we learn anything even from the guru also ki it is not the guru who will impose any such duties to you guru has a right to advise you then you have to apply your wisdom and then work like that one you have to do the right things if he had done so that's what happened like dronacharya also defined ki i have eaten the salt of this royal clan i cannot do anything without the king's orders first they should have set a priority ki we will protect this woman first we should set the priority that is justified nobody must try to disrobe here that too in the court in front of all of us it cannot be allowed no problem even if the world going to be blame me that's what when krishna went ahead to kill bhishma taking the wheel of a chariot then arjuna comes running krishna you took a vow not to take up weapons in this war please don't do this one people will blame you world will blame you shri krishna says no problem if the world will blame me personally but at least i'll be able to establish dharma justice by killing bhishma and drona and all these people they are fit to be killed it is necessary otherwise they will annihilate the entire armies and kill innocents everybody will get killed we have to do this thing important that is the dharma krishna taught before that shri krishna had explored all avenues to stop the war not that they were violent as krishna was violent or simply he was enjoyed going into war for very smaller thing before going into that war lot of warnings were given lot of negotiations talkings everything were tried give them he asked the duryodhana if you don't want to give the kingdom no problem just give them five villages so that they can live independently i will assure you to make them accept that and live peacefully you live with your kingdom no problem that also duryodhana did not accept that is the height of wickedness and evil when you become greedy so all these things happen so that is the reason one has to be careful where you have to take the advice of the guru finally where you have to do the things your own general principles you understand try to do a larger cause that is the general principle we have to understand so all the time so then you have to take we had to defend this ashram for a larger cause so that today peacefully people are able to come and sit and do meditation here so nobody is there to trouble them we are here as caretakers of our guru we wanted to be faithful to our guru so whatever that is so like that we had to take a decision this is for a larger car not for my personal interest for my personal interest i could have gone anywhere else built a ashram 
and we lived peacefully there like we built an ashram in my native village i could have easily gone there and lived peacefully why should i have bothered but i had a duty to be faithful to my guru my guru's institution is like protecting a kingdom protecting a country protecting this institution so that this can be useful for common people anybody should be able to come and do meditation there he need not be a big general need not be a royal person need not be a rich person he can be anybody who can come sit and meditate so that is how we learnt dharma from shri krishna's teachings and his life ah oh, thank you babaji so after the war was over uh gandhari the the mother of the kuravas all of them had died they'd been killed in the war and she cursed krishna and blamed him for the war and <laughs> said that he as krishna could have stopped the war can you talk about that please yeah it is said that gandhari held shri krishna as responsible whereas shri krishna was not at all responsible he always advised even in their childhood also he used to advise the parents take care of your children this is not good that such enmity is brewing brewing one day if it becomes a war everybody is ready to kill each other nobody will listen to philosophy or any such thing so he always advised but king dash dhritarashtra was always very much attached to his own son so he overlooked his children's faults and he did not want to do decision justice which all elders decided let them have their kingdoms and live peacefully with the dignity all of them so that was also not acceptable at that time nobody bothered nobody listened to krishna's advice when shri krishna finally came to the court as a uh, ambassador of pandava to ask let us avoid this war we don't have to fight this war unnecessarily and don't challenge unnecessarily you just give duryodhana give only five villages is good enough i can assure you i will make pandavas accept this and then also dhritarashtra bhishma nobody so even vidura advises dhritarashtra when one branch of a tree has caught fire we need to cut that branch immediately otherwise the fire will spread and destroy the whole tree so your whole clan get got washed away wiped out in this war dhritarashtra you need to get rid of duryodhana just for one person adamant stand and greed and power and arrogance he is going to drag everybody in the subcontinent into this war when there is war from both sides there will be loss of lives who are not at all connected to this war also may get killed unnecessarily you see in this world today also this type of wars are continuing continuing and people are sitting on the table doing conference doing justice condemning and who is right who is wrong these discussions are going on everybody want to define in their own way one tells ki he is wrong in defining another tells no he is wrong in defining so this happening but innocent people are getting killed there they won't wait there whoever kills people or oh, these are innocent people let me wait for a right decisions in united nations nobody is waiting there for nobody so it is all happening so this is what happens though vidura tells dhritarashtra this is time you don't feel so much attachment to your son who is going to destroy the entire subcontinent you just get rid of your son if you don't want to kill him at least send him away to forest he is not fit to be in the kingdom not fit to be a king at all he is greedy for his selfish things he doesn't consider about others righteousness all these are all very important he says but yet dhritarashtra doesn't listen so that's what shri krishna tells oh mother i can understand your pain in our households being a woman you did not have anything to say but all the men folk you saw the king and others they all kept quiet 
why don't you blame them why didn't you curse them no yet it's okay if this is the prarabdha i have to undergo you want to curse me because uh, my job was only to work for justice not that i loved only pandavas i did not love kaurava it is their their nature whoever has wrong nature they will see the end and they will go the wrong way they won't, if they don't listen to me that's what finally shri krishna tells balarama also when yadavas were killing each other because there was no war after mahabharata for nearly 18 years it was all peaceful so there was enormous wealth yadavas had become uh, womanizers and alcoholists then they started fighting with each other and killing each other balarama said krishna you helped the entire subcontinent that hardly anybody wants to recognize shri krishna's life throughout his life swami ji used to tell so much shri krishna work all this thing i have heard from swami ji's mouth only telling about his opinion about what really happened in mahabharata so what happened people try to blame the guru but they don't listen to the guru when they have to listen once they have done the wrong thing they got involved then they tell my guru wanted me to go and do this things so why it is not becoming successful guru will not tell anything you want to go anywhere you want to go and act in movies and i will say okay, okay my blessings are there then if something goes wrong and you don't know how to deal with the situation and you lose then you cannot blame the guru okay guru told me to go on that the guru will not tell that you have to go and tell marry get married you go and do this one you go and do this one when they come we want to do this we got married we are getting married our duty is to bless them we pray for you meditate so that you will be able to do proper justice to yourself and others you will be act upon in a justified way your judgments are better that's what swami ji told always so swami ji spoke about shri krishna also people blame krishna and don't understand krishna but he worked so much traveling relentlessly all over the subcontinent making the kings not to get into arrogance because of the power look after the subjects there is peace is needed that is very important you have to go to war only when all other avenues explored fail when the other person becomes adamant so that's what then the war comes to establish peace bhagavad gita does not teach any violence at all it teaches peace and happiness achieve peace consider about each other that is very important if a king is powerful and righteous then he will look after the entire country entire continent if he is powerful so that's what then krishna tells gandhari it is all right you have cursed me if that is what has to happen let it happen then in the end krishna tells balarama yadavas never considered me like a guru and never listened to my teachings at all throughout my life they wasted their time they wanted wealth and they wanted power they got it from me and today what is happening because they never meditated they were never dharmic they were never righteous now they were arrogant they are killing each other balarama oh brother before our own bodies are claimed by death it is time we go out of dwarka to the forest and meditate and achieve our own liberation so in his fag end of life he thoroughly practiced more more deeper 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 meditation he totally remained in nirvikalp samadhi shri krishna balrama also achieved that nirvikalp samadhi and went into moksha liberation he his body came to an end when there was a forest fire and of course you all know shri krishna was hit by an arrow by a hunter who thought his legs to be a head of an animal so with excessive bleeding shri krishna's body came to an end and he was merged with the self already thank you babaji so you said that krishna spent many many years teaching traveling and teaching people but at the end he gave up teaching even to his own kin 
Is that because they were no longer listening? They were not listening and his body had become old. See, as long as there is strength in our body, as long as there is somebody to listen, even on the Zoom or on the Skype anywhere, if there are somebody who will listen to me, I am happy to answer in the form of teachings that I received from my master Shiva Bala Yogi. Some of Swamiji's devotees, sometimes they try to make fun with their sarcastic remarks and criticize me. Oh, Babaji, today teaching Krishna's teachings, he doesn't talk anything about Swamiji. That's stupidness. All these things Swamiji spoke to me, lot about Mahabharata and Ramayana, his opinions, Shri Krishna's teachings about his opinion. He was, Shri Krishna was not simply a politician as people talk. That's what Swamiji told. He was not an humanizer. He was a small young baby boy when he was playing in the Gokulam with his aunts, Swamiji used to tell. It is all myths and wrong stories have been written. He did great mission work. He was a great national asset, an asset of the creation, Swamiji told once. So he used to explain. So all his philosophy, all this understanding, Swamiji told me, that's how we also learned in our life and tried to follow them. Thank you. And there's, there's one last bit. It's, a, I think, a quotation of Krishna, which I love. You have the right to action, but not to the fruits of those actions. Is, is that uh, Krishna's teaching? This is uh, in Bhagavad Gita, this comes, his teaching, the great truth about Karma Yoga. By remaining in the world, in the active world, by taking actions, means you act upon your work, still you can achieve the yoga of your mind is possible. For that, you put an effort, means you do the karma. When you have a desire, when something you want to be fulfilled, and when you face that you have a duty bound to do that one, like you are a soldier, if your country is attacked, you have to defend your country, then do that action. Never give up that action. That is important. So in the society also, so in front of you, somebody is being raped, you don't keep quiet as a silent watcher, you act upon. Like that Krishna taught. But whatever you want to achieve also, you work for that, remain focused. But when the result comes, that is not in your hand. If it is beyond your capacity, accept it. That acceptance is important. That is what you have to do, that one. So then your mind will remain quiet and recede. That is the yoga. When you meditate, so that your mind can become quiet. So when you are active in this world, so after you have acted, if the things have not happened according to your expectations, you have to accept it. It is beyond your capacity. Then only your mind will become peaceful and quiet. So he also told another word along with this sentence, you will achieve peace only when you have sacrificed. Tyagat Shantira Nantana means. That means not that you have to sacrifice your body or your home or your kingdom or your country, nothing. Simply you have to sacrifice the ego of your mind. Whatever is bothering in your mind, stop that one. Don't bother too much. Whatever you can work, you work. Just by bothering you cannot help yourself or you cannot help somebody. This world is suffering. People are misbehaving. Humanity is irresponsible often. If you can talk, talk or if you can work, work. But don't simply worry in the mind. By worrying, you cannot help anybody. Keep yourself fit always. So that anytime, anywhere, you get a chance to give your opinion. You get a chance to inspire others. That's what Sri Krishna talked courageously always. He told Arjuna also, If you want to kill the Jayadratha, you should have just taken up bows and arrows and killed. What was the need to announce, announce microphones very boasting that you will do this, if you don't do, you will do this. Now your attention has been divided. Half of your attention is whether the sun has set 
and half only is on your weapons and you are shooting the arrow it is not as powerful as it should have had been your inspiration is not good enough in this war you must have exercise that inspiration you must know this one so that also shri krishna taught that's what very important attention in the present can bring a better result and accept the results when it's beyond your capacity that is karma yoga thank you very much baba ji pranam baba ji um baba ji um thank you very much for being with us you mentioned in the story about um uh, sri krishna earlier about wows um in a number of instances there are so many wows uh, being mentioned by the pandavas and sri krishna what is the significance of these wows and and it, some of the wows were good some of the wows were bad so is there a good wow is there a bad wow such vows are actually not necessary which is born out of an arrogance or an ego i just want to show the thing i will do this i will do that one any vow should be for a larger cause for the welfare of the entire universe loka samasta sukhino bhavantu that is the one vow shri krishna took in his life not for anything else that is what is the rest are all if you observe are for personal glory only which is not necessary there is no good or bad at least often it has been proved as a stupid o okay okay thank you baba ji apanam baba ji so baba ji my question is related to krishna teaching so like krishna mentioned that uh, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata so uh, if we see the current situation of this world like dharma has already declined and there are everyone has been the nuclear weapon they are threatening each other to destroy so is the divine is going to reincarnate again in this world or uh, how see, this shri krishna while teaching bhagavad gita in my opinion gave a hope of assurance the same type of personality as shri krishna who always taught dharma who thought of larger cause such type of people from time to time are going to come like today also definitely there is suffering a lot of human irresponsibility wicked things evil things keep happening but there are still some people who advise dharma but it is a different thing larger amount of people doesn't listen to them from time to time lot of yogis have come saints have come in different parts of the world that's what the sad part is that the humanity doesn't listen to them so we are ready to talk this type of things peace harmony consideration to each other but how many are going to listen you see there are only when we meditated about 130 were there as we went into question and answer some 25 disappeared only we have 103 here so how many will take out time to listen this thing how many will set a priority no we must listen to baba ji's answers about shri krishna's teaching and we must try to follow them so that is what is we are teaching freely we don't charge any one of you anything but yet people don't want to listen but if i tell i will give you everything i can give you a kingdom 100000 people will come on the zoom so they get cheated like that one so that is what the sadness is there here and there in different parts of the world such a dharm person have coming also another important even if shri krishna comes because they were pandavas who finally listened to krishna that's why he could accomplish that mission if there are some people who don't sacrifice so like that swami vivekananda said he give me such youth who can sacrifice themselves 15 20 youth then i will change the world and show you that's what is needed today also if all of you meditate then all of you might be able to inspire others in the world will be possible let us not lose hope let us always dream of good and work for that may you be blessed